From the fear of death or trial, from the fear of humility, deliver me, O God, deliver me, O God, and I shall shall not want when I take your goodness I shall not want no I shall not want no I shall not want when I taste your goodness I shall not want when I taste 
your goodness I shall not want I shall not want I shall not want Have a seat, you know what? Thank you, Brother Ken, for guiding us in the special music. the sword. 
the sword of the Spirit, Spirit, which is the Word of God. Amen. So if I add to the Word of God or take away from the Word of God, that sword of the Spirit becomes null. Why? It's no longer the Word of God. It's no longer the Alpha and Omega. It's no longer the beginning and the end. We're not submissive to a passage of Scripture. We've invented a new word from the Lord. And I'm here to tell you there aren't any new words from the Lord. There's one word that was written forever. Look at me if you will at 2 Kings chapter 18. 2 Kings chapter 18. Here's another one. Do you remember this one? Maybe you younger people even know this one. Nanny, nanny, popo. <laughs> heard that one? Do your kids still do that? Oh, no. See, they are completely different. Kids today are like, yes, they're very sweet. I appreciate your company. <laughs> Sorry. What? Are you laughing, Ken? Certainly. Is that how it is? Kids have developed, right? We're past the bullying in the world. Oh, yeah, right. I wish we were. Has a guy got bullied, you guys. He got bullied. You're going to see that in this passage of Scripture. But Hezekiah, interestingly enough, what a man. What a man. Look with me, if you will, at verse 3. Hezekiah 18 and verse 3. And he did that which was right, pardon me, 2 Kings chapter 18 and verse 3 about Hezekiah. He did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that David, his father, did. I'm sorry, dear one. 2 Kings 18 and verse 3. It is about Hezekiah. I like this phrase. Tell me if you don't like this phrase. Say it with me. According to all that David, his father, did. did. Now that's important, isn't it? To do what your parents would do. To do what those that are before you would do. To do what those that are uh, examples would have done. But it's even better to do better than they did. Tell me if that's not the case. Better than they did. Look at verse 4, if you will. He removed the high places and break the images and cut down the groves and break in pieces the brazen serpent that Moses had made. What was Hezekiah doing? Listen, listen to this. He was taking away all the embellishments of the Word of God. You know what the people were doing? They were interpreting the Bible so that they could add more gods to their theology. And what was Hezekiah doing? He was taking it away and stripping it all so that the word of God was bare and pure and clean and just and perfect. What does the word perfect mean? Perfect equals complete. Do you know that? Yep. Perfect equals complete. So if the Bible is complete, how many words of God still need to be added to it? Zero. So when I come along and I say, I've got a special word from the Lord, it better have a text attached. Right, right. Okay? Because that special word of God has already been written. Look with me again at verse 4. He removed the high places. He break the images. He cut down the grove. He break in pieces the brazen serpent that Moses had made. For unto those days the children of Israel did burn incense to it. And he called it Nahustan. Now, Hustan just simply means copper serpent. That's all it means. What do we have today? Copper heads. <laughs> How many of you have seen a copper head before? Are they around here in Dover? Yeah. Uh, or in uh, Delaware? They're, they're in Delaware and they're in Dover too, I'm sure. Hey, listen. He understood the deepest of terminology as far as Now Hustan was concerned because the copper serpent was being used as another god. Copper serpent is a way of saying incomplete. It's a way of saying, let me add another religion, another language, another idea. Read verse 5 with me. You ready? He trusted in the Lord God of Israel, so that after him was none like him among all the kings of Judah, nor any that were before him. What a thing to be said. Yeah. What a thing to be said. Not first. Hezekiah did what his daddy did. Yeah. And second, he did better than his daddy did. Amen. The question is, have you done as well as your daddy has with the Lord? And then, have you gone on from that point to do better than any that were before you? 
You remember when you were a kid in school? How many of you have some memories of your teachers? You remember their teachers? Okay, so tell me, somebody tell me a story about one of your teachers. Yes, go ahead. I'm sure you still remember them, Jimmy. Um, my fifth grade teacher, I, I barely remember this. Fifth grade, well, I barely remember this moment. How long ago was it? A few months ago, right? Uh, yeah, last yeah. school year. Yeah, okay. Sure, go ahead. Um, well, she, I think she actually went to the church I used to go to. Yeah. And so that was a precious memory for you to know that your teacher was actually attending school. Somebody else, a precious memory you got in school from your teacher or something that went on. Go ahead, Matt. That's all right. What? You know those pointer finger things that are plastic? Those pointer finger things that are plastic? Yeah. I can yeah, yeah, I do. He threw one across the room. Okay, well that's a memory. How many of you, when you were a kid, got a gold star? You remember those gold stars they used to give out? My friend, I tell you something. When God gives out gold stars, they're huge. And the Lord does that with those you honor. And how can you honor the Lord? Is it something fleshly that I create in myself? You see, the Lord of God says this, Jesus speaking, without me he can do nothing. nothing. And so as we look at what God has for us, my friends, consider Rochelle's art. My daughter, Rochelle, has some beautiful art that she gives me. And it's the best she can do. And when she gives me a piece of art, I like to put it in my office. I put it behind my desk, Rochelle. She's being real coy right now. And anyway, <laughs> that, beautiful, that beautiful art that she put the behind my desk, most people would see it that's a little bit different than how she sees it, right? But it is, listen now, the very best that she can give with her limited knowledge. Right. Understand this. Hezekiah, when he gave his best, it was according to his limited knowledge. We as Christians, sometimes we know some good stuff, Andrew. You've learned some great stuff over the years. You've learned some good stuff, Jason. And all of you who have been in church for years and years, you've got some great tools in your toolbox. But not everybody's got those tools in their toolbox. And each of us need to be careful to make certain that we give direction, but that we also have mercy. Yep. Amen. So what did Hezekiah do? With his knowledge as a leader, boy, he set everything straight. And after that, then he was merciful. He understood where people were coming from. He understood they needed to come along with him in verse 7. And the Lord was with him. And he prospered with us whoever he went forth. And listen to this. He rebelled against the king of Assyria and served him not. So, man, we have had some great thoughts already this morning, have we not? We had some great thoughts. Why? We're understanding we need purity. We need completeness. We need the word to be our only word of God. Purity in every sense. Simply wiping away every uh, past thought and idea. And then, my friends, this thought. We're allowed, because this, according to the Bible, Hezekiah was a good king. We are allowed once in a while. So look at what negative, godless leadership is doing and rebel against it. We're allowed to do that. Negative, godly leadership... Sometimes we need to say, no, I don't think so. I'm not doing that. I'm going to do what God tells me to do. Look with me, if you will, at Acts chapter 4. What does the word say? Acts chapter 4, where Peter is standing before the council. And he's talking with them. And he says these very important things in verse 19. Acts chapter 4 and verse 19. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge you. Mm -hmm. Who are we to listen to before we listen to President Trump? God. Uh, God. God. Who are we to listen to before we allow ourselves some kind of liberty that Congress has written into law? God. God. Whether there be something that is outside of the parameters of God or not, my friends, we have to review in our mind, pray about that thing, and make sure that God is glorified. Read with me verse 20, won't you? Read it out loud. 
verse 20, in Acts chapter 4 and verse 20. Here we go. You ready? For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. I offended two people this week. Two people. I only do that once a year. How many of you offend people once in a while? Okay. I offended two people this week. Both of them were leaders. Both of them were pastors. Now, here's what I think is important for us to understand. Jesus Christ said this. He said, I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. sword. And that means this. He went on to say, because I don't have to uh, interpret it privately. We can see exactly what the scripture says. He goes on and he says this. I put a difference. I put some great differences, some issues between fathers and mothers and husbands and wives and children and their parents. And why? Because when the Bible speaks, what is it going to do sometimes? Offend. Can people be offended at the word? Oh, yeah. Oh, you better believe it. It happens every day. And I was giving the word this week online. How many of you know I'm a pretty big mouth online? Okay, very good. So online, I was giving the word of God. And both of these guys, I offended. And they made it known to me. And so I went to them. And the one, I said, hey, listen, maybe I could have framed those phrases just a little bit different. And he said, uh, sure. Oh, he said, you know what? I didn't even remember that you had done that. It's totally out of my mind. You know what that is, my brothers and sisters? That is a spiritual man. Tell me that's how it came. Had you even remembered it? Put it aside, completely framed it different, still loved me to death grabbed a hold of me through the internet and just embraced me. And then the other guy I wrote to that I never got a response. And I don't know what the situation is in my prayers that eventually he'll get it and say the same thing. I've talked with him two or three times but I said, I hope that was phrased correct. I hope I gave you, I had to be straight, I had to be straight, I had to be right, but I'm just not sure. And I hope that I didn't offend you. Is that okay to do once in a while? Well, sure. Hezekiah here had to rebel against Assyria. He had to. In his mind and heart, this was what the right thing was to do. And he also fought against the Philistines. Read in verse 8 with me. Ready? Here we go. And he smote the Philistines, even unto Gaza, and the borders thereof, from the Tower of Watchmen to Fence City. Okay. So what are we going to learn from these two passages of Scripture? Verses 7 and 8 of 2 Kings 18. People are saying to me today as a Christian, when it comes to defending your liberty, just stand on the mountaintop and pray to Jesus. And it'll all be okay. And I'm looking at the Word of God and I'm saying, are there times you and I ought to be called to action? Yes. I think so. Now, I'm not advocating for you to go get your AK-47, okay? Whatever these things are. I'm not advocating for that. I'm just saying, in a spiritual sense, fight the good fight of faith. Go and tell people about Christ, whether they like it or not. On the internet, you saw also, will it be necessary for bloodshed? I didn't mean for us to shed blood. I mean, there may be some of us who have to be martyrs for the cause of Christ. It may be that we have to stand up as Peter did before the council and say, it does not matter to me how you feel, what you think, what you consider. I believe God is right, and I will follow him no matter what. Have you had to do that at one point or another? Do you think we might have to do that? How many of you are ready to do that? Praise the Lord. And I'm going to tell you something, starting with Ryan up here and all the way back. I, from my limited knowledge of you, let's put it that way, I believe it. I believe it. Because some of you will not be quiet. You will not sit down. Amen. You will not sit and say, You're going to speak things that are clear and right and direct. And you do things without liturgy, without orthodoxy. You just simply speak the truth in love, in love, but you speak it. Amen. I love the way some of you evangelize. Going through, man, 
I have to set times for myself because I forget to do it. How many of you sometimes forget to evangelize? Be honest now. Mm -hmm. How many of you this week gave the full plan of salvation to someone? Slip your hand up if you gave the full plan. It's difficult sometimes to remember to do it. And I have a hard time redoing that sometimes. But some of you will go to Walmart. And say, Mama, Mama, she just always was so natural at this. Just talk to the teller. Oh, Jesus loves you. Here, let me get, you know, and talk to them. And I'd be like, Mom, this is embarrassing. Come on. Why are you doing this? You know, everybody at 11 years old kind of does that. Everything Mom and Dad does is wrong. Everything. You know? And some of you are like, I don't do that. Well, I'm sorry. I'm just a bad person, I guess. Verse 9 now. Look with me. What are you doing over there, Mark? What is this? <laughs> in our, oh, okay, yes, uh, he's talking about Jack over here, I see. Uh, anyway, he's going to <coughs> Jack. <laughs> yeah. Verse 9. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, we're starting a fight here this morning, come on. Verse 9. It came to pass in the fourth year of King Hezekiah, which was the seventh year of Hosea, son of Eli, king of Israel, that Shaman has said, king of Assyria, came up against Samaria, and besieged it. Israel, my friends, remember this now, okay, is different from Judah. Mm -hmm. And Israel gets attacked, and before long, everyone's seeing it. Now, this is what we're talking about when we talk about bullying, okay? Mm -hmm. You guys in school, how many of you were bullied in school? Mm -hmm. Okay, I was. I'll never forget Michael Robinson. If you're watching Michael, I'm telling you, man. <laughs> you messed me up, man. And these people know it. You ruined me for life. <laughs> Way up in New Hampshire. Go Tigers, Newport, New Hampshire. You remember Michael Robinson? No. You don't? Right, I never told you about him. <laughs> At the end of three years, this guy comes up and he bullies not just Israel, but also Judah. And Judah was the land that Hezekiah was king of. And now Judah's scared to death. Hezekiah's scared. He's shaken. He's sinking through this thing. He's concerned. If you're looking at verse 14, it says, Hezekiah, king of Judah, sent to the king of Assyria to Lachish, saying, I'm offended. I'm sorry I rebelled. He's concerned here and returned from me. He said, that which thou put us on me, I will bear. And the king of Assyria appointed as a Hezekiah, king of Judah, 300 talents of silver and 30 talents of gold. What would you do? What would you do if somebody came to, to stick you up? You know what stick up is, don't you? It's an old-fashioned term for putting a gun in your face and taking all your stuff. It's a stick up. You know what a mugging is, right? Mm -hmm. Somebody comes to mug you and you've got a gun in your face. And they say, give me all your money. What are you going to do? Give it money. You are? Yeah. I don't have any. I'm glad some of you would. I probably would fight it. No, I probably wouldn't. Are we guilty sometimes of snap judgments, though? That's the first thing I should do, Dad. Just hand over the wallet. Or... Take all my clothes off and everything. Give it to him. Take my tie off. Give it to him. I don't know. I'll give him my microphone. He can use my microphone. I don't know what. But when stuff, Ricky, listen, when stuff like that happens, we tend to do snap judgment. Now, can somebody do that to you in essence that you owe in some rent? That you owe in a business situation? You know what we often do? When we're in trouble, we execute snap judgments. How many of you have judged like that? You say, oh, this is the way it is. And we just start off and, man, here's what you see Hezekiah doing. I'll give you all my gold. I'll give you the temple. I'll give you everything. I'll, I'll do it all. My friends, before God, take a second and do what? That again. <laughs> I, I want to talk to you off guard. Before God, before I do anything, what should I do? Right. Yes. Take a second. So that second could mean my life. That's why you need to pray. To 
to the one who has the ability to control how much, Joe? How much does God control? Everything. Dennis, he controls it all. He controls it all, that is. You don't need to worry about him. He's got you. He's got all things under his control. Tell me if that's not the case. Now look with me at verse 17. Read it out. You ready? Here we go. Just read it out loud. And the king of Assyria sent Tartan and Roxanus and Rabshaka from Lachish to King Hezekiah with a great host against Jerusalem. And they went up and came to Jerusalem. And then when they were come up, they came and stood by the conduit of the upper pool, which is in the highway of field. This is like standing in front of Town Hall in Seaford. And everybody seems to come through that artery. And all of these people are coming through, and they're seeing what's going on. Ooh, ooh. Some after all, the big Assyrian people, oh, they're here. Oh, the meanies. Oh, they're after us. Oh. And what do they do? Well, if you'll go through this, I'm not going to read every verse, but you'll see that they actually speak to the people in their language, and they make it known to everyone there, you are in trouble. Scaring them to death. And of course, Hezekiah is already shaking in his boots. Look at me at verse 22. This is what they say to them. If ye say unto me, we trust in the Lord our God, is not that he whose high places and whose altars Hezekiah had taken away and has said to Judah and Jerusalem, ye shall worship before this altar in Jerusalem? What are the Assyrians doing here. They're interpreting the actions and words of Hezekiah in a way that it wasn't meant to be interpreted. What was Hezekiah doing? Purifying what God had said and taking away all of the additions. That's why Revelation 22 and verse 18 was written in the Bible. Sarah, put that up, will you? Revelation 22 and verse 18. Revelation 22 and verse 18. The word of God tells us that we're not to take away or add to the word of God. Revelation chapter 18. Revelation chapter 18 and verse 22. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written. In this book. What was Hezekiah trying to do? He was seeking to purify the ways of God. Look at verse 23 now. Do people ignore and sideline God's true word? Do people ignore and sideline God's true word? I had an atheist lady on the Seaford Blades Talk Network. Again, my friends, I'm not trying to get you to go there because it's just a lot of really unique people, we'll put it that way, that have gathered together and sought to fight a lot of very conservative, godly people. I believe Seaford is, what we see actually in the statistics is that Seaford is the most conservative city in Delaware. Dover is third. Believe it or not, they're third most conservative. Seaford is first in the conservative. It means that 72% of Seaford voted conservative in the last election. 72%. Now what we're seeing in this talk group is a completely different group of people. A very small percentage of our area that are trying to grow. And they're yelling out to me that you get a hold of a guy that preaches in the street. Some nuts. I don't know who it is. Some crazy guy that actually preaches with a megaphone in the street. You ever heard anything like that there? Crazy people, crazy people. Who would do that? Who would do that? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so they listened to my messages, and they saw the way that we presented the gospel. And one thing that was said, interestingly enough, was, we can't fault you on your love. What a, what a commentary. You're speaking out. You're talking loudly. You're expressing your views in any way we wouldn't. But one thing we can't fault you on is that you are loving people. Friends, that's what's got to come through in your correctness. All right? 
in the way that you correct, in the way that you behave, and the things that you say and do. Oh, may God help us to be that kind of holy. That's what Hezekiah was. Look at verse 30 there. Get your Bible and look at verse 30. He says this, and this is what these enemies of God are always saying. Don't let Hezekiah make you trust in the Lord. Say, the Lord will surely deliver us, and this city shall not be delivered into the hand of the king of Assyria. Hearken not to Hezekiah, for thus saith the king of Assyria, make an agreement with me by a present, and come out to me, and then eat ye every man his own vineyard, every one his own figure, drink ye every one the waters of his cistern. You know, last night, my wife and I were in bed, and as we laid there, we heard this. <laughs> there was Jack outside, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, it was Sasha coming up to the end of the bed, and we heard this. <laughs> and, and Barbara, every so often, I mean, this happens like once every, I don't know, day. Uh, no, every so often, she'll say, you want to come up here, Sasha? <laughs> oh, my. That is the wrong thing to say. <laughs> it's just like, whoa! <laughs> I'm here! <laughs> and I know you love me. <laughs> Rob my bed. <baby. laughs> <laughs> That's Sasha for you. So we start rubbing. How many times... Do we come unto the Lord? And we say to him, oh God, I don't know what to do. I need you to take care of me. I need you to rub my belly. I don't need to say anything. I don't have a whole lot to put before you, but I need you to take care of things. God, make everything all right. You know what he does? He tells us in his word that those have decided to take the purity of the word of God and not add to it or subtract from it. He heareth their prayers. You know, the Word of God tells us that women and men alike need to treat each other with respect. Amen. And the Bible says that husbands, husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and given himself for her. And then it says in Peter that we are to treat them as a fragile piece of glass. He says otherwise... Your prayers will be Yep. How many of you need God's ear? Amen. Is it time to live right? Yeah. Is it time to be pure? If you go on to chapter 19, Hezekiah seeks counsel from God. And by the time he gets to verse 14, Hezekiah received the letter of the hand of the messengers. And he reads it. Hezekiah went up into the house of the Lord and spread it before God. And Hezekiah prayed before the Lord and said, O Lord God Israel, which dwelleth between the cherubims, thou art the God, even thou alone in all the kingdoms of the earth. Thou hast made heaven and earth. Lord, bow down thy ear. Hear me, O God. O Lord, thine eye. See, hear the words of Sennacherib, which has sent him to reproach the living God. Of a truth, Lord, the kings of Assyria have destroyed the nations of their lands and have cast their gods into the fire. For they were no gods, but the work of men's hands and wood and stone. Therefore they have destroyed them. Now, therefore, O Lord, our God, I beseech thee, save thou us out of his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that thou art the Lord, even thou only. I saw just a little while ago a film. It was called The Impossible. How many of you have ever seen it? The Impossible. It's about a family who went through a tsunami. You know what a tsunami is? Incredible. They were vacationing in Thailand, and they ended up on the beach. And to make a long story longer, this big, huge wave came and decimated the place. And this family had cuts all over them. This lady's leg was opened up in the back. They went through horrible things. They were all divided up. They didn't know who was dead and who was alive. They had three sons, little kids. Can you imagine going through this? They went through the entire movie, and at the end, they were able to all get back together, and she was able to get the medical care that she needed, and they got on the plane and went home, and that was the end of the movie, and not a single mention of God. I, for one, will not live my life thinking 
I'm owed security. Mm -hmm. My God has mercifully and graciously treated me with the deepest of love to the point where he stretched out his arms on an old rugged cross. Amen. And he took the finished punishment of my sin. I don't deserve that. But the way I can tell him, I know I don't deserve it, is simply to say, Lord, I'll give you my heart. I know you did this for me. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes? Christians, what are you adding to the Word of God? What are you taking away from the Word of God? Applications are thousands per verse, but interpretation is...